All right, guys, got a boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and on the review table in front of you are a bunch of really cool lowers. The reason for this video is that I have been asked, what is the best trigger? I.e. Hyperfire, AR Gold, uh, Timney, uh, Trigger Tech, Geisley, and it's, it's interesting. I was talking to my good friend X-Ring a few minutes ago because I turned him on to the Trigger Tech uh, Diamond. And he, he turned me on to the Hyperfire. And it's, it's really cool to talk to people about the differences in the different triggers. Is there, and I'm going to answer this question right off the bat, the very first thing, is there a best trigger? No, there isn't a best trigger. The best trigger is the one that you're using, the one you chose for that specific goal. Uh, precision shooting. You want a firm, crisp trigger. Do you want to set a... Uh, a two-stage trigger or do you want a single-stage trigger for competition triggers do you want a single-stage trigger I timidly attempted it so uh, anyway let's move on here are the criteria that I use when picking a trigger one is uh, reliability okay I'll be right up and frank with you I've got an Elfman trigger right here and this guy I'm actually shooting this in a uh, PCC and unfortunately, I'm getting like primer strikes with this guy. So I'm probably going to pull this trigger out. I like the trigger, but I'm not sure that I'm going to keep it in a PCC. So we're going to be putting a different trigger in this, taking this trigger and putting it into an AR rifle. Reliability. Okay. Second of all is function. Uh, take up. How far is the take up? Is it a two-stage trigger? Are we going to be running, say, for instance, here's a Geisley SSAE. Okay. I like a two-stage trigger for precision shooting on specific rifles or a combat rifle. If I'm building a duty-style rifle, I'm going with a Geisley SSA or SSA Enhanced. I like the Enhanced. If you're going to spend the money, go ahead and get the Enhanced. This uh, particular lower uh, sits under an 18-inch barrel, and I love this thing. And here's the deal. Crisp as it gets. Am I concerned a lot about the weight of the pool. I am when it involves a precision gun. So we've got a couple things. We have reliability, we have functionality, we have take up, we have one or three, the weight of the pool. But am I really too concerned about the weight of the pool if it's a three gun rifle? Say for instance, we've got this AR trigger right here. And you know what? I've got a gauge right there, but we're not even gauging stuff yet. This trigger right here, I'll tell you what, I love it. There's specific reasons I like this trigger. If it's a three-gun match, I'm slapping the trigger bam, 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 as hard as I can. As where we do a DMR match, here's the Timmy Calvin Elite. Well, you know what? I want something that's precise. And that bad boy does the trick. Check this out. If you want to see something really cool, look at a reset. And that goes second or third or fourth. We're talking about the reset, the functionality of it. And one of the reasons I like the Calvin Elite, but I don't like it. One is because I can never get these things tightened enough, enough to where that thing sits tight. Is it probably one of the best triggers for reset? Yeah. Probably out of this whole bunch, it's got the best reset. But that's not important. What's important is what you want. What, what are you going to do with that, that trigger? We were talking about the trigger tech. My preference is I like the trigger tech on a DMR rifle. This is the Elite build. And I've got the trigger tech on two rifles. This is a diamond, and this is the competition trigger right here. Actually, yeah, this is the, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, the, okay, so this is my backup competition rifle. This is the competition trigger from trigger tech, and this is the diamond. Now, diamond I also have on my 6.5 Creedmoor. What does that mean? Well, it means for precision rifle shooting, I want something that is precise. And as far as I'm concerned, the Trigger Tech Diamond is probably the most precise ugh, trigger out there. Here's the reset. There is none. Look at that. So when people ask me, what is the best out of the, all of them? So let's talk about another thing real quickly. Economic triggers. Now, a lot of people are going to say, I like... Uh, low rube. I'm not taking away from any of the economic triggers. You can buy a fine trigger for $90. What I'm talking about are competition level triggers. And CMC makes an awesome trigger, probably one of the best triggers out there for general use, even competition level. 
but I actually gave my CMC trigger away. <laughs> Uh, velocity triggers. These guys make a great trigger. My only complaint about those things is just, uh, it's beautiful. The brake on that is absolutely incredible. Long reset. Is it something, a deal breaker for me? Absolutely not. But what we're doing here today is one, I wanted to show you the differences between these triggers because it really comes up to what you want. So why don't we do this? I am going to go ahead and take the guys out of here because we all know Geisley. We know what we got when we talk about Geisley. I'm going to take the Elfman out of here because, well, we know what the Elfman trigger is all about. It's a great competition level trigger. What the heck's going on there? Uh, the Trigger Tech competition. This is about $189, I think. Um, is it worthy to be in the high-end triggers? Yeah. This is their economic version. Flat face trigger. Uh, diamond light coating. It's going to stay here. Is the velocity triggers going to stay in here? Not really. I like to think this is probably one of your, for $129, something like that, probably one of the best economical drop-in triggers, kind of in line with the other Timmy trigger, which I forgot to bring out. <laughs> Hyperfire, that's going to stay here. We're going to talk about that real quickly. Let's put it like that. The American Trigger Corporation this is their AR Gold Trigger. This is in my competition rifle, and there's a reason for it. This thing is just, it's got a lot of play, but again, that's a slap happy trigger. I love that thing. Uh, some people don't, and that's cool. As far as DMR triggers, uh, I think the uh, Timmy Calvin Elite is by far one of the best ones. I would use this as a bench rifle, uh, adjustable in like four different methods, four different ways. Uh, also, another one we didn't mention is the Palmetto State Army. This is their single stage competition level trigger. This is a nice trigger, and we've done reviews on all these. I think $119. I've had a couple people ask me. They've had uh, some issues with it, but usually, uh, for the most part, PSA is quick to respond in providing either a replacement or a fixed trigger. Uh, new to the market, and usually there's some growing pains. All right, let's talk about this real quickly. One of the things about my shop, I do have air conditioning, but I don't have insulation. So when I turn the dang thing off, guess what? It gets hot. It gets hot real quick. It's only about 110 degrees outside. Okay, so we're talking about this. Let's talk about the Hyperfire. Hyperfire is probably one of my favorite triggers uh, for just about all around anything. These things, they're not cheap. Uh, I think everything here is probably well over $200 with the exception of this guy right here. But we'll, let's talk about a few things. Go ahead and put my nifty little protector deal in there. Um, it's like a power assisted. You can see the springs in here. I did a full blown review on each one of these things, but we're doing a comparison. Look at the reset. Oh, and I love the adjustable shoe. The further down it goes, the less weight it's going to be. It does have two uh, sets of springs. And another thing you want to be careful with is using these in a pistol caliber carbine. The trigger is so fast that it will hit the, the firing pin. The firing pin will engage the primer prior to that bullet uh, being fully seated or chambered, which will cause a pre-explosion, making the, that round go off before it's fully chambered, and it'll blow everything out. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look at this real quickly. All of these are awesome triggers. I can just tell you that right now. So we'll go ahead and take it. look at, at the trigger pull on this. That is 1 pound, 11 ounces. Again, one pound, 11 ounces. Let's do it one more time. It's kind of hard to reset those boogers. Here we go. One of these days I'll take the uh, time to read the instructions on this thing. One pound, 14.3 ounces. The reset is immaculate. Okay. So as far as competition triggers, three gun competition triggers, I think that this is probably on the top right here. Let's put that aside. Let's talk about the trigger tech, this is a competition level trigger. And again, guys, the reason all these are here is I want to show you a comparison between the three. I'm not going to tell you which one's the best because in my mind, they're all the best. It just depends on what you want and what you're doing with them. But anyway, a little bit of a take up. Check that out right there. Let's go ahead and put the light on it. And what, what I typically will do, I literally will close my eyes and I'll put my finger on it and I will just... So that's about three and a half pounds to me. Here's another important factor. Here's the reset. 
not bad. The recess beautiful on this. Is it a little bit heavy? Uh, to me, it's a little bit heavy. Let's see what the weight is on this guy. Here we go. And I like to pull about a quarter inch off the bottom of the trigger. Two pounds, 12.7 ounces. Let's do that again. Two pounds, 15.9 ounces. Is that, that's that's a nice trigger pull, but again, for from double taps, and what I'm looking for are the follow-up shots, bang, 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 like that with ease, because I don't want to disrupt the rifle, and that's why in competition we always go for these things. You know what I would do with this one is I would put this in a uh, go-to rifle because that's heavy enough on, with a trained finger that you won't have an accidental or negligent discharge or hit shoot something you don't want to, but this is a good trigger to go with. It calls it a reset. If it wasn't a Geisley, I'd probably go ahead and put this guy in here right here. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to save probably my two favorite for the last. Yeah, I do have a favorite. This is the Timney Calvin Elite. This was uh, provided to the uh, YouTube channel by the guys over there at Optics Planet. Now, real quickly, we've had a change in the discount code. It went from KB32 TAC to a simplified KB32. All right, so if you were going to be doing anything with Optics Planet, first of all, make sure that it, it does not. Whatever the product you want, it does not say check availability. If it says check availability, back up and punt, choose an alternative product, but make sure it says one to shoot ships in one to four days. They are just like everybody else slammed. But KB32 is the new discount code. All right. So the Timmy Calvin Elite is your typical drop in. You can see right there. Very simple, very easy. Uh, one of the beauties of this guy is, in fact, that I think it's probably one of the smoother triggers out there. That's why it's on my DMR setup right here. So here we go. Oh my God. So the thing about this trigger, there is absolutely no take up. When you put your finger on it, that's it. It is engaging the, the uh, sear and releasing that trigger or the hammer to go forward. But it is absolutely oh, smooth as a baby's ass. Now watch this. This is the reset. This is the beautiful part about this thing. Here we go. Beautiful. Now, a lot of guys will use the, the cards with the lines on it. What I'm doing is this is practical use. This is real world stuff. Again, one of the things that I do when I'm testing out a trigger, I will close my eyes and I will literally just feel it. Oh, geez Louise, that's nice. Let's go ahead and put the scales on it. You can see it's getting hot. I'm gonna put about a quarter inch from the bottom, 1.26 pounds. That is a competition trigger. This is not a trigger that you want to use for a carry rifle or a go-to rifle or a service rifle. 1.48 pounds. Awesome trigger. The adjustability on it also, as well as you have different shoes that you can put on a round shoe, flat shoe. Uh, I got them over there somewhere on my wall. But it's something I'm not really concerned about. These things are absolutely incredible. So would I have any, pro any problems recommending that? Absolutely not. Uh, it's, it's great. <laughs> Let's just say that. All right. So here's the next one. This is the American Trigger Corp. This is their AR Gold Trigger. This is my full-time A3 gun rifle. Uh, this rifle is a lot better than I am. I could hand this rifle off to experts and they would absolutely love it. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I do when I build a rifle is I try to build a rifle not only to my liking but if i were to hand this off to say x-ring he'll turn around and go holy smokes that thing's badass so the ar trigger or the american trigger corp uh this was sent to the channel and one of the things that i had a real big question for mr american tripper corp and uh was the side to side play there's this thing when it's in here there's a lot of play in that trigger uh because this is more of a competition level three gun trigger, it has a little bit of a take up on it. But let me do this. I made this, by the way. Isn't that cool? Little Ranger bands, a little piece of plastic. Um, so anyway, take that thing. Perfect. It is, I think, probably the best of all worlds. You've got a good 
trigger with some play in it. The reason there's some play in it, you get a blown primer. There's a hole in the bottom of the trigger system right here that will feed primers out and they'll drop out the bottom, which is the coolest thing. Watch this again. And I like that little hook on the end of it because when I'm shooting, I am using my index finger pad just right there. And that thing is on there. Pop, 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 pop. And, the, and the nice thing is when you're double tapping, uh, you're not getting any disturbance in the lower. So all you got to do is hold on. Bam, bam. Just like that. The reset. Let's take a look at the reset. That's the reset. Very short reset. Even though you do have that play, there it is. Mmm, that is sexy. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Put the scales to it. We're going to hold it about a quarter inch from the bottom. 1.9 ounces. 1.9 ounces. Let's go ahead and bring it back. I had this big idea that we we're going to do this competition level trigger bowl is what I was going to call it. And uh, a lot of people were enthusiastic about it, but uh, some people just did not follow up on their promises. 1.14 ounces. One point seven one. So a little fluctuation in there, probably more on part me pulling the trigger. But again, guys, what we're looking at is we do have the play in there. We do have the availability that's going to be dropping some primers out the bottom of it if we get a blown primer. And the reset is ridiculous. And that's why this is my chosen trigger for three gun. I love this thing. If I were to select my triggers for three gun, it would probably be these, the Hyperfire and the AR Gold. Okay, so let's talk about this guy right here. This is the uh, Trigger Tech Diamond. This is a great trigger. Uh, I recommend these all over the place. And <laughs> believe it or not, the inside of that thing used to be absolute polished and gorgeous. We should probably go ahead and pull this thing out and give it a good cleaning. But unfortunately, you know, I'm a I'm a slut when it comes to cleaning. All right, why do I like the Trigger Tech Diamond? It is adjustable. This thing can go down to like a .9, and I actually have this in this rifle. This is my DMR rifle, as well as the uh, the Beast, the uh, Creedzilla. It's also in there, and the Creedzilla is set up for like 1.2 pounds. I'm not exactly sure what I've got this one set at. I'm going to probably bring it down a little bit. This is all a JP-based rifle. This thing is awesome. But again, what I do is I take my trick, the pad of my finger right there, and I bring it in, and that's it. And you can really honestly tell that this guy is heavier than my uh, Creedzilla rifle. So a little bit of a take up right there. It is still a single stage. There is some movement. Just like that. Now let me show you the reset. Here we go. Oh, let's do that again. I'm going to show you that. The range of movement in this trigger is absolutely ridiculous. But in the real world, that's where the measure is made. The follow-up shots. Uh, well, a number of things also with this particular trigger is I've never had an inadvertent double tap, which is important because if you're shooting a DMR match, those are <laughs> that'll get you sent down the road. Uh, but look at that. A little bit of a take-up. Oh my gosh. And then you have the reset. Unbelievable. Let's see what it measures out to. I'm going to say 2.21 pounds. 2.21 pounds. All right, one, point, one pound, 12.9 ounces. Let's do that again. Here we go. 1.7 ounces. All right, all right, all right. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little biased of uh, the Creedzilla trigger. I'm probably going to go ahead and adjust it, and you can adjust it with that screw right there. So that's another thing to look at is the adjustability of these triggers. Uh, of all these, I think the Timmy and this one are adjustable. The rest of them are not. So anyway, guys, when somebody asks me, in conclusion, in conclusion, what's my favorite trigger? Why do I like certain triggers over the other ones? I don't necessarily like a trigger better than the other, but what I do is I like a trigger that suits that specific scope, that job. What are we doing with it at that particular time? Uh, is it a gr good trigger for just everyday use? Yeah, man. 
the little Palmetto State Army, $119. CMC trigger. We've got velocity trigger right here. Uh, as far as a good general use trigger, that thing's awesome. I also use the it's velocity trigger on uh, the Wildebeest. And then, of course, the Elfman, we're going to put that on. Well, part of the problem is, is that rifle, this thing's dirty. <laughs> but that's it. I spend more time shooting than I do cleaning, and I probably need just assistant just to do my cleaning. All right, so what do we learn here? One is, again, scope of work is going to dictate what trigger you choose. Uh, the reset, the pull, the, the break, uh, reliability, uh, the looseness. Uh, is I have walkout pins. There's so many different variables, but I will tell you this of my favorites Trigger Tech, American Trigger Corporation, Hyper Fire, uh, CMC is a close, and then Timmy. I love all of them. Scuttle Boy 32. Guys, if you like this video and you thought it was of value, please let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate you sharing uh, your time with me. And we usually end them like this. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom, because freedom is not free. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. I am out of here. Y'all be good.